Dr. Larry Roberts is a primary health physician of several decades of experience and a pleasure again to have you in the studios. Thank you so much for having me. As always, every week, loving your dress. Oh, thank you. I'm blushing. You I'm <laughs> blushing. I'm blushing. I'm blushing. Thank you so much. Thanks for the, for the compliments. Uh, David and I had this discussion a couple of weeks ago with regards to how many Nigerians hardly ever take their health seriously, not because of anything. They just feel it is well or it will be well. And it's always well. However, for it to be entirely well, I know that one has to take one's wellness seriously. So let's discuss hypertension. Well, first of all, there's no such thing in medicine as always or never. So it is never always well. Hmm. You know, that, that issue of it being well is predicated on several factors. So hypertension, the abnormal elevation of blood pressure, and blood pressure is what we measure as the pressure of blood coming out of the heart that enables it to be pumped around the body. And when it is elevated over a period of time, I really don't want to speak as a cardiologist because I didn't do too well in cardiology in medical school. <laughs> but when it's elevated over a period of time, it can cause a lot of problems, particularly in what we call the tiny vessels in the body, you know, the vessels that go into the back of the eye, into the kidney, into the brain, you know. And that's where the problem comes. Now, a second thing we need to know in this part of the world, in fact, I would say a West African black person, yeah. I don't think there are any West African white people, but they're low, everybody in West Africa is black. West African black people are at higher risk of what we call essential hypertension. Any reason? Because we're West African and black. Just that. Just that. There's no known cause. And it was so funny because, you know, I love to tell my stories. Mm -hmm. When I used to take students out to the... Um, rural areas around the Bejuleki and Ekwe, you know, and these were all fishing villages. And of course, the fisher folk, lovely fellows, lovely people, very relaxed, very spare, you know, they're, they're, they're lean and mean and very relaxed, you know, the, the height of their day, they'd go out at about three, four in the morning, mm. by seven they are back, and their rest of their day is spent relaxing under the trees until it's time to go out again, you know, so no stress, everything was there. And we started measuring blood pressures. Mm. 160, 100, 180. And almost across board, we found mm. these really high blood pressures. And that's when I learned about, can you imagine, I've been a doctor several de decades by then, yeah. and I'm t And that's when I learned about this issue of hypertension. It was... Presumed at that time, no serious, I don't know that any serious study was carried out, but it was presumed at that time because they had a beam by the water, their diet was rather high in salt. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know, definitely mm -hmm. would be higher in salt than, uh, you know. But it's what it is, is that they didn't have a stressed life. They weren't overweight. They weren't eating packaged or processed mm -hmm. foods or so-called fast foods. You know, they... they they, they were very relaxed. They were very jovial people. You know, they were mm. always laughing mm. and, you know. And yet they had really elevated blood pressures. Mm. Now, the, the, the sad part of this is when you, as you said, you know, Shehu, is when somebody just slumps and dies. And in fact, I, I, in the last week, there have been two stories on, in our cycle. You know, of course, I'm a member of the Psychology Cycling Club. You know, two stories in, uh, of two, two of our members one of whom lost his driver of many, many years, who was used, who we knew because every time we went cycling and the vehicles are coming behind, that was the driver, that was his driver. We, we know the drivers, you know. And the story was that he was a known hypertensive and on medication under the insurance of his boss. But he then left the employment of his boss and, of course, mm -hmm. the insurance Stop. cover, and he stopped going for checkup. And according to the wife, stopped taking his medication. Not deliberately, but if you run out of medication and you can't afford to buy it, mm -hmm. you'll somehow think, well, when I get money, I'll get it tomorrow. When I get money, I'll get it next week. Mm -hmm. And unbeknownst to him, no symptoms. Because that's another thing. Hypertension is the silent killer. No symptoms. 
gets to work wherever he was or whatever, and literally just slumps. And before they can rally around and get him to hospital, he was dead on arrival. You know, Dr. Lero, um, I'll take you back to when you talked about the prevalence in the black race. Uh, I'm looking at um, a, pro a projection that was done for 2025. It has been said that um, over 75 million, 75 percent of people in the black developing world would be hypertensive. And I would dare to say that might be a bit conservative. Hmm. As scary as it might be, um, Dr. Alera, it's important that we begin to highlight uh, the possibilities why this could be. Um, you talked about a, a settlement and you eliminated a few of the factors. You eliminated stress, you eliminated diet, you eliminated, uh, uh, yes, diet and stress. And, and, yeah, then, and weight. And, and weight. So yeah. you were able to identify it could have been water or excessive salt. It could. Could have been. Could, yeah. So let's begin to eliminate the possibilities right now. Why we should ensure that these projections don't come to fruition in 2025? I would like to twist that ever so slightly, David, because people then, I don't want to give people the impression that, well, I exercise, I eat a good diet, I don't eat salt, therefore. I'm free. Well, I'm free. Yeah. Exactly. I, we need to disabuse people's minds mm. of that. Mm. Hypertension is. That's it. And the thing we need to do is to constantly monitor our blood pressures. Or not constantly, regularly, mm. sorry. Choice of words here. Regularly monitor our blood pressures so that we know where we, we lie. Now, I always say this. Women have an advantage. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we get pregnant. <laughs> Hmm. And therefore, we start going for antenatal Nathan, care. Yeah. And every time, as soon as you get into the antenatal care, you you part, yes. your, is checked. your blood pressure your is checked. Yeah. Your vitals are done, and that includes your blood pressure. And so you'll find that a great many women in reproductive age group, they kind of know where That's their blood right. pressure lies. So the minute they then check and they're like, no, 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 I'm not used to this kind of blood pressure, mm -hmm. They are seeking attention. Men don't get pregnant. There really is nothing that takes a man to hospital regularly, a strong man, male, male man, to hospital regularly. Do you understand? Yeah. Except he consciously remembers, I need to do this. Hmm. And therein lies the danger. Because I'm so... I, we hear, my husband, you, you've had my husband on the program before. He, you know, the saddest thing for him is when either the wife or the, the mother of these youngish men, they're in their late 30s, early 40s, he, he has never been sick a day in his yeah. life. Since I gave birth to him, he has never gone to hospital. And my husband will say, I hmm. wish to God he had. I wish he was even playing football and injured himself. And that took him to hospital. I wish something had taken him to hospital so they had to do his vitals. The other saddest one is when they actually have been told they are hypertensive and they're like, not my portion. <laughs> You've heard that too many it's really times. Table. Yeah. You know? So these, I, I, I don't want us to look at, um, um, the, I mean, there are risk factors. And we, we should look at them. Which is actually where we're going at this point <laughs> in time. Because uh, you mentioned just earlier on, to highlight the things you said, that some things that you thought could have been responsible, should be responsible for, uh, you know, anyone would be hypertensive. We're not readily see on the surface when you took a visit to a particular place. But what are those risk factors that everyone should guard against or fix in case they are in the middle of it already so that they don't become a hypertensive or no, uh, manage? Well, they are modifiable and non-modifiable. Very quickly, the non-modifiable, you are black. You are in West Africa. <laughs> you are growing old. That's something. You, hair. <laughs> you can't change your genetic. You've got a family history yeah. of hypertension. These are the non, you can't change. Those are the non-modifiable 
risk factors. There's nothing you can do about them, okay? But you are right. There are modifiable risk factors that now lower your risk. And those are diet, lifestyle. Lifestyle. Everything boils down to your lifestyle. Diet, alcohol, smoking, substances, stress, mm. the way you manage stress. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's another one. Yes. How because do you handle that? Because sometimes you have deadlines that you have to... Exactly. <laughs> but you see, you know. let's be honest. <laughs> we were having a chat this morning and, you know, it, it is about planning. Mm. So to be able to say, I cannot meet this deadline. I'm not going to kill myself. I cannot meet this deadline is a very useful skill to develop, mm. particularly in this our deadline dedicated work that we do. And you let all the powers that be know that, look, I'm sorry, this morning I'm supposed to be with the students somewhere. And I told the HOD, you know I have this interview on Silverbird. It finishes at such and such a time. It will take me this amount of time to get sure. down into my car, da, 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 drive through the traffic. I'm estimating I will be at the venue at such a time. I have eliminated that stress point. Hmm. I've managed it. It hasn't changed the fact that I need to be at that venue for 7.30. I cannot. So let's put in place whatever. So that is an, a, a, a way, and you're, you're getting the famous stress buster coming on the program yeah. soon. You know. But that is an example of how you can manage stress. So or manage deadlines. Because work deadlines can impose an inordinate amount of stress, stress. on hmm. people. The other one, of course, is financial. You know. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. You, men, bear me witness. The January stress. <laughs> school fee <laughs> stress. You know, the, the rent stress. You know. Oh, or family or stress. Then family stress. I'm happy you know. the camera was not on me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so family was, stress. Was just stress. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, expectations and from... Exactly. Um, and then the stress I had this morning. Did you see the traffic? Oh, it's, ask me about that on Monday. Oh, I don't want to ask. On Monday, it was exactly. hard. Exactly. It was hard. Yeah. So the, you will find that at a point in time, you know, at points in time during the day, your blood pressure will go up. But mm. ideally, it should come back down. So those are the things that yeah. we, we now yeah. need to, to, yeah, to yeah. modify yeah. in our lives. And we say we have to have those... Um, Sorry, David. Let, let me write on that. Does that mean that stress hypertension is real? Does somebody say that, uh, uh, that it's stress-induced and sometimes it could be sustained? Yes. Whereas you're not actually hypertensive. hypertensive. Okay. That's the, that's what, and I okay. was hoping you were going to ask that question okay. that... You know, when we okay. say regularly monitor blood pressure, mm. what do we do? So having an awareness is very important. Like coming through the traffic and I knew I was seeing red. I could almost he see the smoke coming out of my ears. Mm. Because, and I'm like, take a deep breath, calm down. And I have a few stress prayers, anti-stress prayers that I start saying. Because I know that it's not going to help me or anybody around me for me to allow it to build up. Mm. So there are, these are the modifiable things that you can do. Okay? Mm. And um, I was hoping we'd say that because at the end of the day, if, I took, if you took my blood pressure at that moment and it was high, does that mean I'm hypertensive? Yeah. So no. Does that mean it was doesn't it, was mean that? Induced so at that moment? We, yes. It so mm. in order to make a diagnosis of hypertension, a, it needs a trained physician. Okay? Okay. B, it needs several measurements. So we'll take it, you we'll do a couple of things, we'll take it again, yeah. we'll take it three times, we'll take it on three separate occasions before mm. we come to say, hmm, Oga, this thing is persistent. So there must, there must be a, co a consistency. Yes. Uh, a constancy in the, me in the measurements yes. before you can yes. now say, that uh, this okay. is a, it's a gone case, this, an this hypertensive a, yes. case. This is a man who, a man, a person with hypertension that needs treatment. Mm -mm. Okay. It's, it's, it's so hard. <laughs> you know, it graduates. Uh, I, I don't want us to go to the, the, the upper level of hypertension, which is the heart disease, of course. Let's look at, um, we're talking about stress induced, looking at the, the African continent, we're looking at underdevelopment. Could this be part of the reasons why 
they are predicting that um, there will be an increase within the underdeveloped <laughs> world. No, yeah. no, seriously. Uh, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good research one. question. It's a good research question. Because so if we it, have everything either... working well for us as a people, people don't have to worry so much about what to eat, what to drink, the house rent and the rest of them, that could also eliminate a possibility Definitely, of... but that has nothing to do with our, our, our economic development per se. Mm. Because our forefathers in an agrarian society, you know, would have had, could have had the same stress points. Will the rains come in time? Oh, do I have enough people to bring in the harvest? How, how do I get my harvest to market? So the stress points are the same, but the triggers may be different. Mm. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So there's going to be work-related stress no matter what kind of work you do. Mm. And since human beings must work, right. you know, how you manage that work-related stress determines whether you're going to have that stress-induced hypertension or not. Mm. Uh, well, you know, sometimes you just ask your friend. There are people, uh, please, I need for you to help me with this. No matter what happens, let the heavens fall and the earth goes up. The blood pressure is constant. At their constant low or constant high? Like constant balance. First and foremost, what's the, what's the normal? For the benefits of this, I do know uh, the, 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 the normal measurement of your blood pressure that will suggest that you're fine and the one that you should be 120 120 80. okay 120 90 120 80. 80. I, I heard you i'm trying to I'm trying to, yeah no <laughs> no uh, 200 no no that's no, no. okay so that is an absolute value for now in fact i think they're even trying to bring it down, down a little bit yeah a little bit but as of the last time I checked, 120.80 is like the cutoff point. Why should I be worried? What measurement at a constant time, like a constant K, should I be worried? If you, are, if you regularly check and it's higher than that, it's time to see a physician. Well, and when I, I say regularly check, everybody has these little electronic gizmos. Everybody? Not everybody well, does. You are right, not everybody. <laughs> but a lot of people do. But yeah. you have access to. Yeah. yeah. You know, so so if I, luckily, most, most pharmacies right now, you can just yes, walk in walk there and in say, there and they please will check, check my blood, blood pressure, pressure for, free. Will, for free. For free. Yeah. yeah. Most, yeah. most, for pretty much the community pharmacists are really very good at very that. Very good, yeah. They're very, very good at that. And, you know, and if you do that, say, on Monday and it's a little high, and you say, well, you know, I came through the traffic. And you go again on, say, Wednesday, and it's still high. Oh, my wife annoyed me. And you go again on Friday, and it's still high. It doesn't matter what has annoyed you. Hmm. It's time to see a physician. Your treatment. Oh. Whereas it's lower. We're not too worried about low unless when you stand up suddenly, you feel faint and dizzy. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. What Otherwise, low is good. I happened for many, 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 many decades. I was 90, 60. So for somebody like me, 1960, 1960, that's pretty low. It's low. My mother was like that. Oh, so. You know, so again, family history. So I happen to know that throughout my childbearing years, I was about that. But then for somebody like me, 120, 80 now becomes dangerous because medically I'm 30 millimeters of mercury above, above. my normal. Mm. Wow. Yes. That's why you need a physician. That's why you need a physician. It's hard to reconcile. You, at no, this you point. don't have to reconcile it. Let the physicians reconcile so what, it. What, what do you do you if, if you never used to know your benchmark? Exactly. Then, <laughs> that's why yeah. it's important yeah. to know your benchmarks. As mm -hmm. we say, know your numbers. Know your numbers. So that you know, because as many as we are walking this planet, we're all different. No. You know, so everybody has a responsibility to know their numbers. And what's normal for them? But 128 is the absolute. You know, Dr. Lero, growing up, growing up, I, I used to think we, used, we were made to believe that um, high blood pressure is predominant at a certain age. But sadly, uh, I've seen a 23-year-old girl Thank you with high much. blood pressure, hmm. and then you begin to wonder what is happening. This so is what, what, what has seeing. age got to do with this, with it right now? Well, age was always the, ma the major cause of hypertension <laughs> when they say. Causes of hypertension, age. Increasing age was always a major cause of hypertension because the arteries, the, the blood vessels are 
less pliable, you know, less, less elastic and so on and so forth and all kinds of things that, you know, old age, age just comes with so many symptoms that our parents didn't warn us about. Mm -hmm. That's another discussion, by the way. <laughs> 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 but you are right. The, the, the problem is that we're now seeing elevated blood pressures younger in adults. younger people. Yeah. And that means that this is affecting our labor force. Mm. People forget that the younger ones, the, the, the mid-20s to say end of, uh, late 50s, yeah. are the labor force of any economy. Yeah. And they are supposed to be at their healthiest it's and good. most productive. The last thing you want is that age group slumping and dying or having a stroke that renders them a burden mm. Mm. rather than an asset. Mm. Mm. These are these are the this is the public health implication of hypertension. So yes, it's 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 bad enough when the individual has hypertension, but an individual that has knowledge and is being managed appropriately, it is what it is. All right. Before we go to treatment, I always like to ask questions that have to do with children, especially uh, you know most times you say that. Uh, no wahala. They don't pay rent, no subscription, or they are the ones that dictate how things go. And so you want to imagine that they shouldn't have as much issues. Is there anything like childhood hypertension? Yes, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. It's, there, there, there are conditions that cause children to have hypertension, but <laughs> let's be honest. A child with hypertension is not the hypertension per se. That is the problem. Something has caused it, and that's what needs to be dealt with. Oh. And thankfully, in a great many of the c cases that, I, that are, we read about in the textbooks, something has taken the child to hospital. Yeah. Yes, so the child is being managed appropriately. That's where the pediatric cardiologists come into play. That's scary. Well, a lot of things do go wrong. With ch children have cancer. Children mm. have eye problems. Children have mental mm. health issues. Mm. Children are just little human beings. So, you know, pretty much anything that can affect a human being, they are at risk, less so perhaps, but, yeah. you know. You know, you know, when we talk about um, young adults of, uh, of, of today, um, little has been said to them about the dangers of the lifestyles they seem to have coughed up. Um, the drinking lifestyle, the it's, smoking it's lifestyle, terrible. the narcotics and all of that that they're, they're involved in. Not, not much has been said. And then I haven't heard anybody tell them that uh, drinking too much could cause you hypertension. I, I, I've never heard that anywhere for young... I mean, I mean, you're talking to young adults and you're talking about hypertension to young adults. I've never heard that. Maybe we should increase this advocacy and awareness and, and conversation we for our to. young adults. And I think one of the things that I'm praying we start to reverse. Our educational sector is so, so poor. You have people, the people who should be telling young adults about this are the teachers mm. in school. The teachers most and generally themselves do not know. We have got, thanks, thanks to the militocracy era, mm. We have got an educational system that has been completely bastardized. I say it without fear and favor. Do you recall there was a certain governor of Kwara who issued a test to teachers of what primary three or was it primary two students should do and teachers were failing and then the teachers went on strike and quarreled with the, the governor? Oh, of course. And this is what we are seeing happens. So, yes, the, the, the young, young um, adolescents and young adults are in a, particularly if they're in school, are a captive audience. Just teaching integrated science, which, if I recall, WIEC is, is still compulsory in WIEC up to SS3 level. Yeah. Okay. You know, but just teaching integrated science should give adolescents and young adults more than enough information for them to know that lifestyle habits, and let's, let's bring it under that broad term of lifestyle habits, 
need to be addressed. Are, are there enough adolescents and young adults in sports? If they were brought, I mean, you, physical education is, a, is on every timetable in school. Hmm. At least once a week, physical education. Yeah. Sports days. That is where we should be grooming our next generation sportsmen and women. Are they being encouraged? Oh, Are they see. being given the... So all those lifestyle habits that are set in childhood, adolescents mm. and young adults, we're losing or have right. lost. Doctor, we have to wrap up in just a, a few minutes. Let's talk about treatment. And um, I think we've talked about... Uh, prevention, but we can do more of that for those who missed out on it, how to prevent hypertension as well as treatment. Okay, so first and foremost, I will not call it treatment, I'll call it management, because I'm not okay. a cardiologist, I'm not going to go into the treatments, but like you said, primary prevention, what are we going to do? You manage the modifiable risk factors, mm. and if you know your family history, then you need to be even more conscientious what are you doing as per physical activity? Do you, reg do you exercise regularly? How do you maintain your diet? Drinking a lot of water? Getting enough sleep? David? Yeah. David? Yeah. David? Yeah, I heard How many that. times I call you? I heard that three <laughs> times. Three times. Uh. Getting enough sleep. Now, I know, but if we, if we are intentional about getting enough sleep, at least in a week, Try and make up your sleep deficit. I know maybe Monday to Friday, you're, you know, you get home late, Doctor, you're up you, early. You, you can't understand sometimes. I, the <laughs> me, I am there. But, you know, deciding they say that on a, on a Saturday from Saturday Where afternoon. Where you have to monitor and supervise sometimes. I hear How you, do you, you do? must. You must be intentional about these. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you are of no use to anybody, if God forbid, well. yeah. if you're not there. Absolutely. So these are things we need to, so these are the things, your, you know, your sleep habits, your water drinking habits, I've talked about this so many times, your exercise habits, your diet preferences, you know, less of the processed and packaged foods, more of the natural high fiber, you know, foods, basically. And then we get to the management regularly, know what your numbers are. <clears throat> know what your numbers are. Make sure you get your blood pressure regularly checked. Now, if you are told that you are hypertensive, this is where you submit yourself to the care of your family physician. You're if agreeing. necessary, your family physician, I mean, the family physician can handle it at yeah. that stage. If he needs to, he can refer, yeah. he or she can refer higher. Right. But your family physician will then place you on the appropriate medication. We have to go right now, oh, doctor. In 30 seconds, I hear that there's a part of us, something that we do engage in, that really can cause us to be hypertensive or even die suddenly, which is bitterness towards people. Oh, absolutely. Can you tell us more about Stress that? Stress points, yes. Yeah. That is it. You know, revenge, vengeful thoughts, having, bearing grudge. Mm. You have to keep a positive mindset. Yeah. Darling, you're bringing the expert on. Take, let's take off the cup, because I'm, 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 I'm going to be tuned in and listening <laughs> <laughs> to Dr. Memuna. But she, she's, she's so good at that, mm. you know, managing your stress points. And when you know you have, your heart is churning up, you must find a way to... So bitterness can cause oh, hypertension. Oh, bitterness can and will and cause so many, many, many things to go wrong with you. Amazing. It's so nice to learn at your table all the time every <laughs> Tuesday. Thank you so much, Dr. Alera Roberts, primary health physician of Several decades of experience. Thanks for making our time uh, to be with us on the show today. You're and um, we keep the numbers known. I'll keep the advocates of money. Thank you. I wish you a very wonderful day. Thank you. All right. Uh, you missed out on that uh, particular conversation. You have to go check us out online and get an update. It is a must watch for you. Now, wait for the next discussion and see what is going on with you. Uh, things you're doing or maybe you're not doing with regards to mental health. In just a moment, just stay with us.